Okay, so D Eve, um, and you've told me come faking the dynamic mechanisms reach. So um, a few of you were asking me about the dynamic mechanisms and you seem to get a bit lost on them. So I'm gonna go through part A first today and then we'll go through part B, which is a more it's a newer part T. Okay. So part A, the graphic on the right shows the fluid agitator as as used when donating blood fluids. Movement is generated by a link mechanism which causes the tray to rock to and fro, preventing um, coagulation of the fluid. The link mechanism is similar to one shown in figure C4. Crank OA, which is 48 millimeters long, rotates in an anti-clockwise direction about the point O, as shown. Link CB pivots about a fixed point at C. AB and CB are both 110 millimeters long and are pin jointed at A and B. Plot the locus of point P, which is the midpoint of the linkage AB for a full revolution of crank OA, and determine the inclination in degrees of the maximum angle of rotation of CB. Okay, so C and, uh, so A is going to be moving around here in the circle, and CB is going to be moving forward and back. So we need to plot the locus for point P, okay? So we're going to come over here. So we have our point C here. This is going to be the center of our circle here on the left hand side. So we draw in our circle, we draw on point A and we get the distance. So we have to get the distance for our point B. So you'll see B is out here. So to get that, we know that it's a set distance from A and C in the question, it tells us that A, B and C, B are 110 millimeters long. So we're just coming from A 110 and we're coming from C 110 to get that point there. Okay, and we know that our point P then, we have the distance for that as well. Uh, o, A and where is P? It's the midpoint of A, B, so it's halfway on A, B. Okay, so that's there. Now we know that C is going to C, B is going to rotate over and back like this. Okay, so uh, we're dividing up our circle. The green line here is the movement of B. So it's just going to move across here, over and back. We don't know how far, so we're drawn at any distance. Okay, and we know that A is going to be going anti-clockwise. Now we know that A, B is 110. So we're going to go from the our first point, 110. Okay, if we draw our line, and then get the midpoint in that line. Okay, we do the same process for the next point. So we go 110 and where it crosses the green line, that's where we join it to. So you'll see this point here is joined back to this point over here on the left hand side. And then again, it's our midpoint. Okay, we continue this for every section of the circle that we divide it up. So we should have 12 in total. Now again, it can be difficult to keep track. So just make sure you take it one point at a time, don't join all of them, and then find the midpoints of each one. Do it one point at a time, find the distance, mark it off. Okay, especially until you get used to doing the questions. So we, once we have all of them, we draw it in. Now the next thing is the angle of inclination. Okay, that's part A of the question answered. Part B, if you see it, it asks us to determine the an ink and indicate in degrees the maximum angle of rotation of the CB. So CB is moving from here. This is the furthest distance is going on the right hand side, but it comes over here to the left hand side. So we need to look at which point is the furthest over point. Okay, so this one here is the furthest over point. So that's the angle of inclination down here. So the furthest over on the left and the furthest over on the right is our angle of inclination. So that says their maximum displacement of the linkage. And that should be that for that question, okay? So attempt that, let me know how you get on with it and send it back to me.